garden started in the backyard. But as we look over the fence at what used to be just our weedy side lawn, you can see that the garden has expanded over the years towards the front of the house. Several years ago, we added a front bed where this etched granite rock, a Christmas gift one year from Doug and the boys, identifies whom the garden honors. The walkway leads to the beautiful elliptical arbor that Doug built, from which a lovely garden angel invites us to enter. If you look closely, you'll see many wind chimes along the way. Her Christmas and birthday gifts to Melissa every year. Throughout the garden, there are many pretty little spots to stop and listen to the birds singing along with the chimes. When we started building the garden, our neighbor's house was plainly in view. But after 20 years, the garden feels very sheltered and peaceful. This fountain was a gift from my great aunt and uncle who wanted us to buy something that we thought Melissa would like. We think of Aunt Nellie and Uncle Sam every time we hear the water bubbling. It is especially beautiful lit up at night. This sweet angel was a gift from Doug's sisters. I often say a little prayer with her as I see the garden's reflections in the mirrors that we like to hunt for at garage sales and flea markets. Walking along the daisies, and the daylilies are in bloom, and the purple fountain grass waves gently in the wind. The yucca stands tall and majestic. The flowering cherry tree, Melissa's tree, is lovely in early summer with fragrant pink blooms. And here we are, back at Melissa's bed where we started. I'd love for us to take just a few seconds to breathe in a bit of Melissa's spirit and remember all the things for which we are grateful. The newest gift to Melissa's garden is this colorful butterfly chime, gift from the awesome 1330 team, bringing us to perhaps our favorite garden angel, which Melissa helped pick out. Each Christmas we place her under the tree, just as Melissa asked. In this little corner, a family of sparrows are currently residing in the birdhouse and these wonderful bonfire begonias in an antique hanger, a gift from her son Mark, hang next to a stained glass window, a thrift store find. Melissa was, among other things, a deep thinker. She thought a stone bench would be a fitting place to rest weary hearts. She was right, as always. This adorable little structure is actually a tool shed which Doug built with windows and a door from an architectural salvage store. We like to sit on the front porch like two old folks in their rockers.
this to review. Bit by bit, the garden expanded around the back of our house, and we built this little pond and waterfall. The frogs love sitting in the sun on the water lily pads, making quite a racket. And I love these four little statues, which we've named for the four kids who used to swim in the pool that used to be right here. Michael, Mark, Melissa, and Matthew. As we walk together to the back arbor, let me tell you one last story. On that trip to the Grand Canyon that I told you about earlier, we took a hot air balloon over the Sonoran Desert. After we landed, the captain spread out a beautiful rug and asked us all to kneel as he recited a prayer that, it's been said, was spoken after the first hot air balloon safely landed in France in 1783. When we heard it, Doug and I immediately knew that one day it would have a place in Melissa's garden. And this is where we'll end. Here it is. The winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun has blessed you with its warm hands. You have flown so high and so well that God has joined you in your laughter and set you gently back again into the loving arms of Mother Earth.